GRC analysts are the unsung heroes of any business environment, and while their roles and responsibilities are abundant, the amount of qualified candidates aren't. So on today's episode of Cyber Studies, we're going to show you how to break into the field over the weekend. Let's go. Welcome to Cyber Studies. If this is your first time here, my name is Giovanni. Thank you so much for stopping by. While following the Unix guy over the past couple of years, I've really come to appreciate his direct approach on cybersecurity. With over 20 years in the industry, the guy knows a thing or two because he's seen a thing or two. So I had saw that he had posted on his site a GRC course, like a zero to hero, and I asked him if we could review it on the channel. The GRC mastery course by Unix guy is this comprehensive full rundown on all the skills required and necessary for that GRC GRC consulting or auditing space. Now, this course is video based with numerous quizzes, written assessments, and practical capstone project at the very end to fully exercise what you've learned throughout this course. The course is aimed for individuals who are an absolute beginner and want to land that non-technical cybersecurity role, or for folks who are kind of gaining a more holistic view where they're currently working and, and exercise their technical skills as well as like a, a holistic view to, to go for those managerial spots. Without diving too deep into every module, the course in invites the individual as to what GRC professionals do and what kind of responsibilities they have in an enterprise environment. Kicking things off of module number one, we get into the, the named course itself, the governance, risk, and compliance. We get a nice little introduction, how its importance plays into cybersecurity and how it affects the enterprise. And then we also get introduced into this fictional corporation that's carried from module one all the way through the capstone project. Abed did a really good job doing this incorporation of utilizing uh, real world examples with a fictional company. So you get some practice you know, as, as you're moving through the course itself. Next, we're presented with module two. This goes into the risk frameworks, things like NIST and a couple of the more popular assessment types. Now, I really like the approach that Abed took here when he went with the whole practical assessments in that you get to use an actual uh, like framework and then go through the, the course of this fictional corporation. And then after you submit your, your answer, you're then presented with a, uh, like a rubric of how you would have done compared to that. And hopefully your, your responses are similar to the answer that are expected. <laughs> Moving on to module three, this section focuses on the cybersecurity audits. Now, <laughs> the, the main takeaway here is the three lines of defense concept and what you would do uh, with your post inspection findings. It, it's not necessarily like a witch hunt or to get the organization in trouble, but rather take these findings and kind of learning from that moving forward. Now, I do like how Abed uses the two to three minute approach when it comes to his videos, because th this is not the most exciting material, but it's extremely important important. So you just keep it more precise and, and concise. Um, but I, I really like how he takes the material, shortens it down to just the, the meat and the potatoes, and then keeps it moving and grooving. Debatably the most difficult task in any enterprise, module four goes over asset management. Now I myself as an incident responder have to deal with these kind of you know, growing pains all the time. So if you're looking for anything particular in an environment and things aren't, you know, categorized or, you know, accounted for <laughs> as they should be, this creates unnecessary barriers and uh you know, divergences that kind of slow things down. So this is an extremely important module. I really liked it because it really hit close to home. Uh, but by golly, it's one of the hardest ones to actually implement. Module five covers the identity access management uh, controls. And <laughs> this one is extremely thorough because it covers things like password policies, multi-factor authentication, uh, things like privilege access management, what have you. There's just a ton of stuff. Now, when you're getting into any sort of learning path or anything like that, uh, <laughs> As a beginner, you really want to start seeing some, you know, ROI on your investment when it comes to learning. I think this is by far my favorite module in the sense of um, learning to receiving, just because a lot of other courses are, are very fluffed. It, it's very much a, you know, hey, here's what it is, you know, moving on kind of a bit. But Abed really takes a moment and he really explains these processes. And, and some might say it's a little bit overkill. I think it's perfect. I think he really explains it in like a, like a human, understandable way to where it's like, oh, that makes sense. And then the practical assessment really ties the whole concept together. While going through modules six through eight, I personally found these ones a little bit easier just because this activity was really similar to my my day-to-day -day job, my full-time position. Now, <clears throat> this course is designed for individuals with 
with little to no experience. And this, this stuff is really good information to build off of. Now, this is not going to be fully comprehensive. Again, this is more of a uh, like an audit and consulting course as opposed to a technical course. But this gives you the information to kind of understand when you have your technical uh, practitioners talking to you. You have some kind of build your information off of. So this acts as a great baseline of information. And then if you want to dig more into, say, like, you know, incident response or uh, penetration testing, those things, you do have like a base understanding to keep that conversation moving. One of the more important things you could implement in your environment with lasting returns would be the actual education aspect of cybersecurity attack surfaces. So module six goes into the education of cybersecurity attacks, uh, whether it's things like phishing or social engineering attacks or just commonly used credentials like password walks or just commonly guessable things. Now, <clears throat> this is this is like one of the the more difficult things to stress because you can have the most, you know, elaborate cybersecurity protection policies and, you know, tools, appliances, what have you. But if you have an individual clicking a well-crafted phishing email, uh, it, it kind of mitigates a lot of the, the, the protections you put in place. These controls are only as good as the weakest link, and unfortunately the weakest link are humans. <laughs> Module 7 gets into the data protection, um, data loss prevention, protection, what have you. So in this particular module, this covers things like the classification labeling or just the actual technical controls that prevent the movement of important materials. Material. Now, I really liked the practical assessment on this one just because of how thorough and in-depth it was. It was really like a, like a head scratcher. It kind of made you slow down for a second and dive into these. Uh, but this is one of the things that prevents the sort of exfiltration or the insider threat pieces, and it's covered pretty thoroughly in this module. So for, <laughs> for, for full transparency, module eight was the one that I was actually trying to click to the bottom and just take the practical assessment. I was trying to skip this one. Module eight is about incident response. Now, I, I was really reminded in this particular course, you know, this module, that this was a non-technical uh, course training. And uh, I, I took my notes, I, I you know, followed through, I, I, I soaked in the material, it was great. Because what, what I took away from this is, this, this part was not for me. This was for the individual who was trying to get a understanding and baseline as to the roles and responsibility of incident response. Now, if you were looking for more blue team material, please visit Cyber Studies and all the videos we're posting, you know, monthly. Uh, but this was really nice because again, this, this allowed the, uh, the management, the leadership, the stakeholders to understand what these different jobs are and then what these technical practitioners do. Um, so again, you know, I, I had a little bit of a, a bias to this, but then as I went through the course, I was like, you know what, I can see the perceived value in this and like how this would be helpful to someone who has little to no experience. Just know you're not going to be slapping too many keyboards on this module. <laughs> so as we round things out and, and land this plane, module module 9 discusses the importance of third party management or, or third party uh, risk displacement. Now, <laughs> this one is really interesting to me because of the, the concept of saying, hey, we, we could do this. However, it'd be so costly and inefficient time wise that we could actually mitigate this responsibility and pass it to another party. Uh, they accept those risks. They didn't provide that service back to you. It, it was really fun to do the actual practical assessment because I've seen some of these, uh, these negative consequences play out fruition in the real world in previous jobs to where it's like, oh man, like here's this activity, you know, mitigating it over there. And then they're actually not doing this thing. So there's like a whole like bureaucratic process. Um, they did, he did a really good job capturing the true essence of this whole third party management and like the risk mitigation piece. <laughs> now the last module before the capstone is module 10. This goes into the penetration test and vulnerability management section. Now it was really cool to see how he showed the uh, different types of penetration tests as well as like how the vulnerability management piece couples with all of this. Uh, it, the, the importance of seeing this whole thing play out through a, a business lens and, and how it was kind of framed to where these components play a, a larger part together, uh, the whole blue, red, and then in between the purple you know, teams. Uh, it, it was really laid out very well, and then you get to see these reports, uh, good examples of them, and, and how they could be conducive to fixing your environment. Diving into the actual capstone project itself, this resembled more like an advisory or a consultation uh, report that resembles an audit. 
Now, <laughs> I, I really kind of emphasize how thorough this this portion of the, the course was because you, you download uh, multiple attachments to your machine. You can walk through the actual report itself and you are rack and stacking all of the controls in this fictional corporation and determining if it's a pass or a fail. There, there's a five section review on all these controls. Once you've done this rack and stack, you then go through and do a two part uh, written response followed by a review process itself. Now, <laughs> I really can't emphasize, this took me forever. This, this was extremely thorough. There were all these questions that you go through and you're like, okay, well, I have to now re review the material and go back and forth. And could this be construed this way or is it meant to be this way? The, the, it really becomes uh, a best judgment approach based on all the training you know, prior. Now, if you did the practical assessments, the quizzes, you took notes, you're gonna be fine, but this is not gonna be something you're just gonna breeze through. I think it took me like two hours to go through the actual capstone itself, and that's because I was trying to make sure at the end, you know, I, I got all this stuff covered. But, um, and the fictional you know, uh, corporation, they bring you on as a full-time employee, they double your salary, and what they do is they say, we want you to do a you know initial inspection on the, the health of the organization, and then we want a three-year plan as to how we're gonna get it on track. And, and it's, it's, a, it's really fun because Ahmed mentions that in his experience, his 20 years you know, in the cybersecurity field, that these are questionnaires and, and reports that he's actually used out there, that he's been you know, paid, you know, ship you know hands on deals uh so this is very practical very uh, uh useful material here very, very real world but <laughs> it took me forever now i i am very grateful he did you know post submission he did go through and review all the material probably like over like 30 minutes of review showing his uh, methodology how he went through there's a lot of like hand holding in a very good way to where he's like hey you know while this could be seen this way this is how the industry wants it to be seen we don't want you know the gray in between we want black or white and and you know how we come to our conclusions as a control passes or fails in, in its space I, I really cannot emphasize like the, the the capstone itself could be a separate training course in its own. Like the the the, the value proposition here is very decent, you know, on the capstone alone. The material there is is just really good, uh, no fluff. It is it was a head scratcher. It, it really took a little you know mental muscle, but it, it was it was a very good capstone. I, I really liked it a lot. If all this wasn't good enough, Unix Guy includes a bonus module after the capstone on how to do things like CV, resume, templates, your cover letters, and how to optimize your LinkedIn profile. Now, there are some videos out there on his YouTube channel that shows you how to optimize your LinkedIn profile, but it just fits really well with this course material. It basically encapsulates all of the, the content that was just in this, and then puts it into the template that just, it, it's honestly copy and paste and it makes it super easy. Uh, you also do get a, like a completion certificate, certificate of completion to post on your LinkedIn. And it's nice that it's actually integrated through LinkedIn's ecosystem. So it just looks a little bit nicer. Um, <laughs> again, like the material itself is, is great. And then complementing it with how to get the, the analyst position, it, it, the, the value proposition is there. This is significantly cheaper compared to other courses out there where GRC is just like a very small section of it. I think this is like the only one out at the moment that covers, you know, these audits assessment types uh, but again just the, the, the full you know training package the hands-on experience and then the the whole getting the job uh, components really makes the thing feel very holistic so if it isn't abundantly clear at this point, GRC Mastery Course is worth its weight in gold. I really think it's an uncontested training you know, platform where the, the, the material is so niche, it is so specialized, and it's, it's pretty large. Uh, there's certifications out there that do mention GRC and auditing and consulting, but very little. I mean, honestly, it's so small. It's wild to me that this is like, a, like an actual career. There's multiple you know, title types for this career and there's not dedicated training like this. So so honestly, first mover advantage, this is really good stuff. I liked it. I wanted to check it out. Even for, as like a technical guy, I, I had to see what was going on. Uh, so check it out here at grcmastery.com. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one.